Welcome to another Stage Analysis video. It's Sunday the 8th of October 2023. As always, lots to get through in the in the weekend review of the markets in the, by the, the Stage Analysis approach. So we're going to start off by looking at the, the major US indexes before looking at some of the futures charts, the industry group bell curve, industry group RS rankings, and we've got market breadth, and the US watch list stocks to, to finish off. So starting off, as I said, with the, the major US indexes, but of stage analysis of where we're at currently. So this time with the S&P 500 here, we continue to be consolidating around the 30 week moving average for a second week here. So we're in what we would consider in the S&P 500 here. This is the, the point where we can potentially turn to, to stage three, early stage three, could still recover back into, into stage two again. But you can see we've had this, this ABC type correction, which often is a, a continuation pattern. Obviously, it's been quite a significant correction and the first major correction since the, the stage two advance started back in the, the later part of, of March back here. But didn't start to, to push out more convincingly until until May. You we'll see that through the, the futures charts as well. So it's come back in quite a long way. And you can see the percentage of stocks above there combined 50 day, 150 day and 200 day moving average in the entire US market. So this covers the NYC and the NASDAQ, not just the S&P 500. It's down to, you can see a, a 28 here. So it's at 27.72%, I believe, to be precise at the moment. So it's come all the way back down to the lower zone. Anything below 30% is what we consider the lower zone. You imagine this is an uh, American football field. You've got your, your two end zones. We're looking to score against the market above the 70% level. The market's looking to score against us below the 30% level. So we're back in weak territory here where you generally only see when the market is in a stage four decline. So S&P 500 and the Nasdaq masking a lot of what's going on underneath the surface in terms of the actual individual stocks as the vast majority have been in stage threes and stage fours or have failed to, to break out of, of stage one bases and they've been continuing to chop around in the sideways ranges for a long while. So the vast majority are actually in weaker positions. But if we do get a, a strong reversal out of this lower zone. It is the time when we are most aggressive on the long side at that point. But at the moment, the, the continual downtrend in the in the overall market breadth as the pullback has continued continues to to decline here we haven't yet got a turn on this medium to longer term measure from the S&P 500 as I said here we've still got this potential early stage three how do we determine that you flip the chart here and you look for what we'd be looking for on the flip side in terms of when you look for early stage one first close back above the the 30 declining 30 week moving average, we would have started to consider this early stage one, so what we call stage 1A. Then at that point, we look for a reversal move, pull back into the range, and for it to start consolidating, chopping around before going the other direction. So, on the flip side of that, come back to the, the chart we're at at the moment, then we'd be looking for the, the opposite of this. We'd be looking for a rebound attempt in early stage three back into the range. We want to start to, to get past this last significant bar range, ideally. So looking to see how it responds versus the near term resistance levels. If you look at the daily chart, you can see we've got a rebound at the 200 day moving average here Friday. Obviously, a significant bar. 1.18 percent you see percentage of stocks in the s p 500 above their 20-day moving averages starting to rebound back up to 25.6 percent if it is a swing low what we expect with the 20 percent the percentage of stocks above their 20-day ema is for a move from the lower zone all the way back up to the upper zone so we expect a, a strong quick move straight through from the lower zone to the upper zone if we get a weaker version of that and it starts to fail at the midpoint starts to pull back down again then it's more likely just another dip in the road on a in a downtrend but if we get this strong recovery back to the upper zone then it's more likely to be some kind of reversal so looking to see how that develops in the in the coming week or so look at the nasdaq 100 remains the the strongest index in the market at the moment it's held up in stage two still hasn't yet moved to stage three here so still in a late stage two 
significant base structure here at the moment. Reversal over the last two weeks was up plus 1.75% on the week. Percentage of stocks are at 61%, so still in a healthy position for the NASDAQ 100 with the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving averages, so the, the longer-term moving average. So as we know, during stage two, when you're in a strong stage two uptend, you tend to be above that 60% and ideally the 70% level as well throughout the majority of the stage two advance. As you can see at the top of the, the 2021 peak here, as we started to drift off in the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average, the index was still rising, but the percentage of stocks was starting to drift lower back into the, the middle ranges as it started to, to break more down into stage four. It was already down towards the lower level below 40% at that point. So the fact that we're at 60% at the moment still shows a, a healthy position for the NASDAQ 100 at the moment. Obviously, if that starts to, to drift lower, then it would be of more concern. But at the moment, still looking for, obviously, a, a rebound attempt in the near term here. Same with the, the NASDAQ 100 daily chart, back above the 21-day moving average here. You can see the percentage of stocks above their 20-day in the NASDAQ 100 rose up, rose up to 50% coming out of the lower zone. So this is a, a near-term buy signal for this breadth measure alone, this very short-term measure. Again, with this, we're looking for a strong move immediately back to the upper zone. We want to see that thrust straight from the lower zone to the upper zone in order to indicate strength. Again, if we don't get there and it falters and starts to roll over and whimper and get back down into the lower zone again, then we would expect it to take a deeper test here. But at the moment, looking for a recovery of the 50-day the moving average in the coming days and how it behaves around there. We did have this obviously significant bar and then gap down in a few weeks ago now. So this is the near-term resistance level. And that was also a previous significant bar area. So resistance up into this 15,250 area, I would say in the near term, then looking for if it can overcome that, you want to start to get back above the one and the two ATR levels here. Going to the NASDAQ composite, very similar to the NASDAQ 100, come down a little bit deeper. Percentage of stocks only at 26.02% and it's never really got out of the gate with this one. It's because the NASDAQ composite is has a big weighting in terms of the um, healthcare stocks, pharmaceutical, bi um, biotech type stocks. There's of the NASDAQ composite, when I do the, the sector breadth every every other week on a Monday, it's, it's, it's the largest group by far. It's got over 1,100 stocks in that group, and it's been the weakest group overall over the, the course of the, of the year. So continuing to hold the NASDAQ composite back in terms of the, the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average, but if you minus those out, it's in a significantly healthier position. So... Mm -hmm. It's interesting to look at it in different ways, but in the in the near term, the breadth here continues to deteriorate in the near term. We haven't yet got a rebound, although the price action has rebounded the last two weeks. The breadth has continued to, to dip back. If we look at the NASDAQ composite on the shorter term, however, we've got 25.46%. You can see there has been a turn up in the percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average here. You can see as the NASDAQ composite itself is back above its 21-day moving average, we've still only got a quarter of NASDAQ um, stocks above their 20-day moving average here. So 21-day, 20-day, very similar in terms of what you would expect here at this point. We should be expecting this to hit 50% with the NASDAQ actually closing back above that 21-day EMA there. So we would expect this to happen very quickly early in the week. If it doesn't, that would obviously be a sign of weakness. So at the moment, near term, spring and a test going on at the moment and follow through. So this is our, we'll see our follow through day in the, in the cancelling method, but obviously it's how it acts after these kind of bars. Uh, obviously makes a potential follow through day so if it immediately reverses this and gives it up starts to undercut the load then obviously that would be a failure of this but it's just one metric in many obviously we look at all of these multiple breadth indicators as well as what's going on with the, the price and breadth action in the in the stage analysis method so we move on to the, the MYSC, much weaker in the, the recent pullback here. Failed breakout attempt again. It's had a few failed attempts this year to try and move out into stage two and hasn't really managed it and come back in again. So it's still in the, the broader range that it's been in for the most part of the year, as you can see at the lower end of the range now. We did have a bit of a demand tail on it this week as it reversed back up at the, the end of the week. But 
right near the, the bottom end of the range. Obviously, if it got any worse than that, could potentially turn lower into stage four. You can see from a breadth perspective, 37.31%. So in the in the lower range here, below the 40% level. So in what we consider the, the stage four zone, although technically the actual, it's back in stage one here at the moment with the, the failed stage two attempt. So we'd give it a, a stage one minus as it's an unappealing chart at this point until it can start to recover some levels, get back above the 30 week moving average, for example. If we look at the Russell 2000, very similar to the NYC in terms of having a few failed stage two attempts this year to come back into the range with this little head and shoulders in the in the near term over the last few months and to come back underneath See its 30 week moving average for the last three weeks. Again, back at the lower end of the range here and testing that. A little bit of a demand tail, but still closed down minus 2.12% on the week. So at the moment, this is at the lower end of its stage one structure. It could fall over and turn back to stage four here, but if it can rebound, we need to see it recapture that 30 week moving average and for the to get back above the, the short term moving averages as well. So at the moment, still in a stage one minus position as well. Look at it on the daily chart, you can see significant bar on Friday with the, the reversal percentage of stocks above their 20 day at 27.33. Again, as with the, the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ composite, we want to see all of these move at the same time. We want to see strong breadth thrust from the lower half um, lower third of the chart to the upper third in a very short amount of time. We want to see that near term strength. We don't want to see it fill, roll over after a, a brief break attempt here. So if this pops back up towards its declining 21 day moving average here, and then it can't, it starts to peter out around this area, then potentially you would see that start to drift back lower again. What we want to see is that strong thrust back towards the upper zone and for this to obviously overcome those short term moving averages with ease. So a lot of near term resistance in the Russell 2000 here has been the underperformer of the year. In terms of the, the major indexes, Russell 2000, NYC, etc. have been, been the weaker areas in the market. So we need to see this one at least stabilise in order for the, the stage two to, to recommence in the, the large cap indexes, the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, etc. As if this is still declining, obviously that continues to put pressure on those as well. So we need to see some near term strength in these again, if, if we're going to see those rally into the, the fourth quarter or not. So VIX attempting to reverse over the last three days back to its 200 day moving average. So sitting right at the 200 day moving average at the moment. So we'd put this in a completely neutral position at the moment. You can see the, the chop that we've had I talked on a, the midweek video about the previous one back in March as you can obviously have multiple days where it chops around if it's if it's trying to reverse it's not a not always a, a quick process so a lot of volatility in the near term so we could quite easily have some a sudden reversal and pop back up to the upside again don't just because we've had this follow through day as such on Friday take it for granted that we're immediately going to reverse and go back up again there's plenty of opportunity for volatility here still so so we're still in a, a completely neutral position on the VIX. But if it does manage to start drifting back below that 200 day moving average, then we'd be moving towards more of a positive side of the market. But if it does rebound back in here, continue to chop, and obviously expand beyond what we've seen here, back above this 20 level, etc., then obviously we would be very, very defensive. <laughs> 